the congregations of Peace Lutheran Church and the Lord of Life Lutheran Church in Austin welcome you to worship this morning. And we really appreciate your willingness to invite us into your homes. Whether you are currently members of our congregations or family or friends joining from a distance away, or somebody new to us who is seeking to connect digitally to worship of God, welcome. We are so glad that you are with us. And we hope that you will find some, something that is truly life-giving in this time that we spend together. And we certainly look forward to that time in the future when we will worship together again, face-to-face -face in our churches. I have two items of um, housekeeping to take care of this morning before we go further. As the first one is I would like to ask for prayers for the family of Herman Hainel. Uh, he died this morning. Uh, his wife and family were at his bedside, so please keep them in your prayers this week. Also, I would like to um, bring forward a ministry opportunity that is happening at Peace in the parking lot this week on Wednesday, June the 17th. From 9 to 3, they are going to be having a blood drive. And there are still some openings available in the afternoon. If you want to click on the news tab that is on the peaceaustin.org website, you can find out more information. And we hope those of you that are able will have an opportunity to help uh, provide needed blood in, in our community at this time. If you are looking for a bulletin for worship today, you can find that on the homepage of Peace austin.org. There is a PDF link right there that you can either download it and print it off or maybe open it up in a secondary screen that you might have to follow along. And of course, if all you bring to worship this morning is yourself, that is enough. And we are so very glad that you are with us. This morning, our hymns are going to come from the uh, Red Cranberry Hymnal, Evangelical Lutheran Worship. If you have one of those handy and would like to follow along, please be our guest. Our hymns today are hymn 579, 579, Lord, you give the Great Commission. Our hymn of the day will be 546, 546, to be your presence. The last hymn will be 208. Praise to you, O God of mercy, which is listed in the bulletin, as thanks be to you. <coughs> At this time, we invite you to gather around that sacred space that you carve out for yourself, Maybe it's outdoors. Maybe you have a lit candle. <coughs> a bowl of water to remind you of your baptism. Or <coughs> cross. <coughs> Excuse me. Let us take time to center our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude.
We'll begin our time of worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures for generations from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our faith. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on, your own, on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and we do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus. in through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. 
God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 19. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I have done to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one. Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You're invited to reflect silently as Psalm 100 is read, or you can join me in reading it aloud. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The second reading is from Romans chapter five. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, but that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, children. Hope you're all doing well. Good morning. Maybe playing games, reading books, oh. playing games, reading books, uh, maybe even doing some work around the house. Sometimes during our lives, you know, we have to do really big jobs. You know, for you, that may be something like uh, cleaning your room. That could mean all the rugs in the whole house. Would you be surprised to hear that even Jesus sometimes felt that his job was too big? He was going from town to town, and city to city, healing the sick, casting out demons, which I think is way cool, raising the dead, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. But there were just too many people. I want you to think for a second about a farmer who has a big field full of crops and they all need to be picked. There's way more than he can pick by himself before everything goes bad. Now, what would the farmer do? He wouldn't want all the crops to rot in the field. What would he do? 
he would hire people to do the picking. Jesus sort of did the same thing. He gathered the 12 men that were his followers, and he gave them the power to do the things that he was doing. Then he sent them out. He sent them out to, from town to town and city to city, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. What a big difference this made. Just think how many more people they were able to help and how many more people they could tell about Jesus. Can you imagine what it must have been like to be one of these people that Jesus sent out? I mean, their lives had changed so much. They've been simple people, fishermen, carpenters, and now they were healing people, raising them from the dead, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. But I just wonder, where are you in this story? Now, I don't think Jesus was just talking to his helpers here when he sent them out. He was talking to me, and he was talking to you. Here are two things I want you to remember. One, we may not be able to heal people, but we can be nice to others and do good things to those in need. Two, we can tell others about the good news that is Jesus Christ and the kingdom of heaven. Wow, just think. Jesus was dealing with this problem 2,000 years ago, and we get to be part of the solution. Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for sending your son. Please give us each the strength to tell others about him and your kingdom. Amen. is recorded for us today in the ninth and 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus went through the towns and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him, and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is, at near, is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Powerful words become miraculous deeds. Jesus' powerful words and deeds not only save us, but they call us to action in the mission fields of our world. When Jesus finished his um, preaching on the Sermon on the Mount, he, of course, came down from the mount at mountainside, and he was just surrounded by large crowds of people. And a man came up to Jesus, and he knelt at Jesus' feet, and he asked Jesus if he would make him clean of his leprosy. Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man. And through the power of Jesus' words and his touch, the man was healed and the man went away and went on with his life. Later, when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to Jesus to heal a sick servant. And looking into Jesus' face, the centurion, in just deep, deep honesty, said, I trust you, Jesus, that if you say that my servant is healed, he will be healed. And Jesus said to the, to the centurion, because of your faith, your servant is well. Sometime later, that Jesus visited Peter's home. And upon entering his home, Jesus found out that Peter's mother-in-law was bedridden with a fever. And he entered her bedroom, and he reached out, and he just touched her hand. And immediately, she felt better. She could get out of bed, and she went about serving Jesus and all of the people that were gathered together in Peter's home. Later that evening, there were many demon-possessed people that were brought to Jesus, and through the power of Jesus' word, he drove out all of those evil spirits and, and made those sick people well again. Well, time went by, and Jesus and his disciples floated across the lake on a boat, and suddenly a furious storm came up, and the Waves of water washed over the boat, and it terrified the disciples, of course. And Jesus stood in the boat, and with his powerful wind, words, he rebuked the winds and the waves, made everything completely calm. It was after that that Jesus entered his own town. Some of the men had heard that Jesus was coming, and so... They brought a paralyzed man to see Jesus, and the man was on a mat, and Jesus looked down at the man, and he said, Son, take heart. Your sins are forgiven. Pick up your mat and go home. And sure enough, the man got up off of the mat. He could stand. He could walk. He rolled up his mat, and he went on his way. His life was fully restored. Powerful words become miraculous deeds. Jesus' powerful words and deeds, both they save us and they call us to action in the mission fields of our world. When Jesus moved on from his hometown, he was met by, he met and came across a man by the name of Matthew. And Matthew was sitting in the tax collector's booth. 
Now, everybody around town knew who Matthew was, and they didn't think too favorably about him because of his profession, of course. And Jesus walked right over directly to Matthew, and he said to him, follow me. And Matthew, he got up, and he followed Jesus, and the powerful words that Jesus had spoke become, became Matthew's life. One day, a synagogue leader came to Jesus, and he knelt before him, and, and he said, you know, Jesus, my daughter, my daughter has died, but I believe if you come and you put your hand on her, that she will live again. And so Jesus goes with the synagogue leader to his home, and he takes the girl's hand in his, and the girl goes up to live another day. In the meantime, a woman who had a long-standing issue with bleeding trusted in the power of Jesus, and she reached out and touched the hem of his cloak. And he turned around to her and he touched her and he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has healed you. Powerful words do become miraculous deeds. And Jesus, powerful words and deeds, they both save us and they call us to action in the mission fields of our world. Jesus called the 12 disciples. Simon, who we call Peter, his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. And Jesus, as he gathered them together, he sent them out then to actively work in the mission fields where they were, and he commanded them, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, drive out those demons, and proclaim the kingdom of heaven, that it has come near. And as you have received freely, Jesus said, give freely. Powerful words and become miraculous deeds. Jesus' powerful words and deeds both save us and call us to action in the mission fields of our world. Well, our gospel text today begins with Jesus traveling about the cities and the villages, teaching in the synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of heaven. And there's almost an identical statement concerning Jesus' ministry that's found earlier in Matthew's Gospel at the beginning of the Sermon at the Mount. And today's text introduces Jesus' teaching on discipleship. The words and the deeds of Jesus become the description of the ministry of the disciples. They too will proclaim they too will cure. They too will engage in the ministry of word and deed. Chapters 8 through 10, which really surround our text today, follow a progression. Miracles, call. Miracles, call. Miracles, call. The call to disciples in every age is a call that is enmeshed with incredible grace and the enabling power of God. Through the power of Jesus' words and deeds, he brings salvation to all of God's people. And through his powerful words and miraculous deeds, we see and we experience for ourselves God's saving grace, and we are called and empowered by God then to proclaim and to care for God's people, to engage in a ministry of word and deed. 
we find ourselves at this time living in a world of chaos. Chaos that's created by a worldwide pandemic and compounded by racial unrest that has, is erupting anew after the murder of George Floyd. And we are living in this world of great suffering and pain, of high anxiety and bitter feelings. Each time we go out into public, we risk exposing ourselves to the coronavirus and we wonder, gosh, is it really safe to go out? Is it safe to go back to work? And we worry if, gosh, if we don't go back to work, then how are we gonna pay our bills? Just when is it gonna be safe to go back? And some of us, we remain sheltered in our homes because we are too vulnerable ourselves to catching this deadly virus that is throughout the world. And Others of us are so anxious to get out of the house again that we're ready to go just about any place. And we then are placing ourselves in harm's way. And we sometimes appear to others when we're out and about as if we really have little regard for the people around us. We just need to breathe in the fresh air and feel the warm sun upon our face. And many of us, especially those of us this morning who are gathered safe at home, worshiping virtually with our communities of faith, even though we so yearn, we so yearn to be together again, face to face. We do what we can with what little we have, and we hope that it will absolutely be enough and that Really, then it'll go away soon so that we can get back to some kind of normal, right? And it is in these minutes, these moments, that we are reminded of God's saving grace and the miraculous deeds of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His words are powerful. His deeds are miraculous. They both save us and they call us to action in the mission fields in which we are planted. And whatever energy that we have or resources that we might bring, we know that God's incredible grace and enabling power sustain us and uplift us so that we can do the work we are called to do. And we are reminded it is absolutely The good news for us this morning are powerful words of Jesus spoken to you and to me. Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. My power, my powerful words and my miraculous deeds both save you and they call you to be my laborers, to be my disciples, to go out into the mission fields and to provide the harvest. I call you Dave. I call you Dick. I call you Becky. I call you James. I call each and every one of you by name, Jesus said, and he says, you are mine. I empower you to go out into your town and proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near through me. Hear what I have done, Jesus says. It will indeed change your life. Let us pray. Holy One, may your empowering words become empowering deeds in our lives as we answer your call to mission in our troubled world, that we bring whatever we are and whatever we can give and use it for your benefit, and we will know that it is enough. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen.
before the God of our ancestors, we welcome, we come to the sacred water of baptism. In holy baptism, God graciously delivers us from sin and death by joining us to the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Through the water and the word, the Holy Spirit calls us to walk a new life in God. In this new life, we are joined across time and space to our ancestors who have lived and died trustingly and to the whole Christian community on earth. Their witness supports our Christian journey. Nourished by the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers, all who are baptized are empowered to live in the fullness of their baptism and to join all of God's reborn people in serving the community with their gifts. I invite you to reflect on the covenant of baptism and to renew and claim its promises or to reflect on your own call to baptism. To say yes to God, we say no to the forces that defy God. I ask, do you denounce the devil and all the fourth forces that defy God? If so, you may say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? If so, you may say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, you may say, I renounce them. I renounce them. We know that we cannot continue to say yes to God and to God's call on our own, through our own strength. And so we commit to continue our life in a community of accountability. I ask, will you live among God's faithful people Come to the word of God and the Holy Supper when we gather again in person for that. And stand in the strength of the words and of the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, and all of the sacred scriptures. If so, you may say, I will. I will. Through these things, you are strengthened for a life of faithfulness in the way of the cross. Will you seek to proclaim Christ through word and deed, caring for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, you may say, I will. I will. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs over the waters at creation, uh, springs into the valleys that refresh and satisfy us and all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carry those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. 
In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock. And you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us. The deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He will send us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin. And cleanse the water of baptism. Close, clothe the baptized with Christ. And claim your daughters and sons, no longer Greek or Jew, no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, but one with all the baptized in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Through baptism, God adds your name to the role of all of our ancestors in faith. You are part of a priesthood that we share in Jesus Christ. You have not been called in vain. Therefore, take up your cross and follow Jesus through the prairies and the grasslands, in the desert wilderness, along the freeways and back alleys of suburbs and city. You belong to God, sent to witness to Christ before the world. Amen. Is our mission blessed? Do 
into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. Be present in places of conflict, especially here in this country, as we wrestle with racism and the legacy of slavery and colonization. Raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation here and across the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. We pray especially this day for Bob Kelly, Pearl Morgenstein, Mary Griswold, Alan Moss, Martha Levine, Charles Fox, Roger Kim, Peggy Adams, and those we name aloud and in our hearts. Feed all who hunger, empower all whose voices are unheard, and help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this con these congregations that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. We pray for the loved ones of Gary Bemis, the family of Vince Crawley, the family of Thomas Milhans, and the family of Herman Hanno. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. As you reflect on how you might bear God's peace into the world, I invite you to think about the many gifts that God has given you.
to think about your stewardship of those gifts and how in this time you might best share those gifts with others, share them as you are able. Maybe it's offering to make telephone calls. Maybe it's offering to run errands. Maybe it's offering to cook a casserole. Maybe it's offering to donate to an important cause. Maybe it's offering to a monetary gift to your church. Each of these are ways that we can be good stewards of the th things that God has first given us. So please take a moment and consider your offering. There are links um, electronically for giving both to Lord of Life Lutheran Church and Peace Lutheran Church on our websites, or you can mail in your monetary gift to the church of your choice. We truly do appreciate um, any amount that you can give for the work of the church. And we know that we want you to give as you are able during this very difficult time. I think it's equally important that you know that there are other places that you might offer your gifts and your talents um, in, at times of need, and you can choose those at this time as, as you reflect um, upon all these ways that you are good stewards of the gifts that God provides for you. Let us hear the music of the offering. came and lived among us and he taught us to forgive he died upon the cross and rose that in him we might live he commissioned his disciples on a mountain galilee all authority in heaven has been given unto me. Go therefore, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit throughout the world proclaim. And teach them to observe the things that you have learned from me. with you now and eternally. In Jerusalem they waited on the day of Pentecost. A spirit came and they proclaimed forgiveness through the cross. Three thousand there were baptized. They gave themselves to pray. In fellowship they broke the bread, Christ's teachings they did share. Go therefore, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, to out the world them to observe the things that you have learned from me, and I am always with you, now and eternally. And so our Lord commands us to go and do the same, to live our lives as he has taught to glorify his name. With the Spirit he equips us, 
His presence always near, that we might shine for all the world. His love drives out all fear. Go therefore, make disciples, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and Spirit throughout the world. them to observe the things that you have learned from me. And I am always with you, now and eternally. And I am always with you, now and eternally. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and the unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>